so I will start my 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 uh, talk on this, and then I hope to guide you through some uh, of this uh, hands-on activity. So we are going to talk about this uh, drawing on technological pedagogical content knowledge of, for building of this STEM quest, which is uh, which is the other title that that has been introduced. Uh. So there, you, if you can see the the screen, you can see the PPT. I have already shared the PPT in the chat box. You can download the, the PPT. Within the PPT, there are two publications that I have uh, published on this topic. That's for your reference. And for today's today's menu, am I talking too fast? No, no. Am I okay? Uh, okay yes, okay. no. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prof Chai, can you send yeah? the slide so? Yeah, you you have I put the slide in the Zoom. Yes. Okay. The All of you so. can just download. Uh, download. You can download and then for your reference, uh, you want to do whatever. I'm fine. Okay. So uh, today's menu, I will cover a little bit on introduction. I'll introduce you to the theoretical framework. We are we are teachers, so we need to have some theories on the work. Ah, uh, it's going to be a bit long. Then hopefully. We can do some hands-on uh, in the breakout room. I want to I want to break you up into your all your own room randomly to assign you to a room and then you work with someone on the on the Google site. I have already shared with you the Google site. All of you are editors. That means you go in, you can type and you can change things inside the Google site. And the Google site will be something that at, at the end of today you need to you need to complete lah. Huh? Or, in two weeks time i don't know what yuli's uh, arrangement is like then i'll share with you a case study that i have done with unj unj uh, about two years ago we still haven't published it but uh, the result i can share with you and we will see how it goes okay so let's go on to the next one so a uh, very brief introduction we do a swap analysis. You know what is swap, right? The strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and uh, trend. Huh? So I, I misspelled the thing. So I think a lot of school teachers, we have been teaching science and mathematics. And presumably, uh, we, if we have been teaching for quite a, a while, uh, we should have a high level of pedagogical content knowledge, which is the PCK. So school teachers, we have this uh, strength. We have good subject content knowledge and we know how to teach this subject knowledge. However, school science and maths uh, are usually taught in isolation and school organized curriculum and manpower uh, also in silos. So when we come to when we come to talking about this STEM, integrative STEM, integrative STEM stand for you know you you have this uh, curriculum methods and all this will have to be put together the science, the technology, the engineering, and the mathematics. Okay, teachers face main challenge uh, in acquiring the technological and the engineering knowledge. Technological, I think you are you are not too bad. You, all teachers now have some technological knowledge. Uh, building right. website, yeah. Am I too fast or what? No, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you will, but engineering knowledge, uh, based on my review about this, uh, review about literature, which I published in 2019. Huh? The teachers generally feel that they don't know much about engineering. So mm. in terms of engineering knowledge, we are a bit short, but engineering knowledge is actually not really, you know, it doesn't have a knowledge by itself. Engineers basically are designers. So they use the science and math knowledge Okay, to, to look at a problem and then use those knowledge to address the problem. So engineering has a set of design processes. There are some, uh, some more or less uh, other form of technical knowledge that you need to acquire, which we will cover a little bit later. So the weakness that teachers face basically is uh, technological and engin engineering knowledge. The opportunity is this, the technological advancement now to date. Now, now we have a lot of like 3D printing, microcomputers. Microcomputers means like, you know, micro bits are the small, small little things that you can program uh, easily. And block-based coding environment. This has now contributed a lot on this uh, maker's movement. 
and because movement are quite big here in Hong Kong and Singapore, there are some. Okay, some students are really good at it. They can really program the small little micro bits very well, and they can do this three D printing. They can print a lot of different parts, and then they can they can get a lot of things done. Okay, so this is the opportunity. That means engineering how to be done in school currently how is possible and is is not too difficult. There are many usable teaching videos available for various types of technology. I I myself is not trained in uh, pro computer programming or things like that. But recently in my work, huh, I just look at some of these uh, micro micro bits programming. You whatever you need to know, you just go and go YouTube and Google. You have the the knowledge there. They will teach you how to how to turn on uh, light with this. Uh, how to detect the light intensity with with these micro bits. All these are available. So there are many, many resources available and teachers doesn't need to know everything nowadays. You need to know how to how to collate the resources of, and let the students go through it. And you, I think today's teachers, of, the opportunity is for us to learn together with the students rather than, you know, to teach the students. There are too many, too many new things that come along. And my current project is actually on AI, artificial intelligence, which I know nothing, but I still have to, you know, deliver that project. So I, I learn as I am designing curriculum for this uh, uh, AI and uh, we are managing. Okay. So there are many, many usable things on online. Uh, more and more teacher has to become a curator of online resources rather than be an expert of everything. Okay, so STEM, when we talk about STEM, huh, one way to understand the interrelationship is engineering is the discipline that applies the scientific and mathematical computation to design process or products. When you design process or products, huh, actually the outcome is technology. Set. And you look at it from a, you, you want to solve some problems. When there's a concrete problems, you know what to, you know what to do. So later when we are, when we are in the hands-on, huh, we will be, identifying problems that we think students can use the science and mathematics knowledge to, to do something about. So that's STEM, uh, that's STEM, it's a more simpler sense. So engineering or making problems, uh, we have to find. And engineering and making problems, they afford the authentic and active learning for science and mathematics. That means the learning of science and mathematics no longer just paper and pencil. We do a lot of compu uh, computation on paper. We need to calculate everything clearly and then absorb a lot of science knowledge. Nowadays, there is opportunities for you to look at a problem like building a bridge across a village or you know, uh, making a musical instrument, which we will try to do uh, later. That is a kind of a knowledge that, you know, there is opportunity for, for kids nowadays to actually do this and study the math and science behind this. Uh, concurrently. So this engineering or making problems of can make learning of science and math not so abstract anymore. It is much more concrete and something that they can actually do something and then learn about the knowledge behind it. Okay, so that's the opportunity that we face now. And there's a, a threat uh, that all of us face or uh, actually all, all country and all nation face. Uh, uh, the collective competency of a society uh, to create STEM knowledge Currently, it determines uh, our status in the world. If your, if our country is not really, really good in STEM, uh, then we are always trailing behind. You know, but just you know, shut down your semiconductor and things like that. So there's a surging interest uh, in integrative STEM education all over the world, everywhere. I'm, I'm not sure about uh, Indonesia. Hong Kong has launched a. Uh, a STEM education initiative. I think Indonesia also have, China definitely have, China also have this AI educations. They are teaching primary school students about AI. Okay. And also America definitely have this the new generation, NGSS, new, new, genera uh, new generation science standard. So that kind of science standard uh, has heavy component of technology. Yeah. So all over the world, we feel the, the threat about this uh, social economic growth that is needed. If you don't have good STEM students, uh, then you are going to lag behind. So this is the basic introduction about 
them why do we why are we doing it and the way forward given the threat the strength the the, the weakness that we have all we are in the age of uh, ai and stem and ministry of education should formulate stem or ai policies uh, uh, then we need some school reform and teachers interdisciplinary team which i hope that later when you get into the team uh, and learning by design uh, for the capacity building with university support is the uh, is the main main way forward it means simply that after your teacher education uh, uh, you get your master or even your a PhD or learning doesn't stop. You have to you have to learn a lot of new things by engaging yourself in a team, interdisciplinary team, and you learn to design together with other people. As you design, you learn the knowledge. So learning by design becomes a, a way of teachers' professional developments that no one can no one can stop. Okay. At this point, any any question? Introduction. That's just introduction. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so fine. far, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now we talk about the theoretical framework. Okay. So you want teachers to do something, or we need to actually. Prof uh, Chai. Yeah. Prof Chai, you can slide so. I can. I can what? I uh, no. I mean slide so. Ah, you want me to do slide show? Uh? Okay. Yeah, because it's not quite bigger. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't see my screen now. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it is, okay. it is, yeah, it is the right click. Okay, okay. You will, I, I do not know what you see on your screen, now, huh? but I am on slideshow mode. I Thank have you. Screen, so I'm, I'm a bit lost. But whatever it is, uh, you, you just look at or you open your own screen now, as we talk through. Now. So, Whatever we want teachers to do, the, the important thing is we need to have teachers professional development. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, however, this, this uh, teachers professional development for, for STEM uh, is actually worldwide uh, quite lacking. Because most of the time, the teacher educator, uh, they are either good in maths, maths, chemistry or something. They are not good in STEM. The STEM people are actually from the, the engineering department. So, to ask teacher educator to train the teacher to become STEM competent, huh? sometimes it's really difficult. So we go by the learning by design. Huh? So the what can we draw on? If you want to, you if you want to help teachers to build the capacity, you need to kind of map up the knowledge that teacher need to know. And traditionally, your teachers strong teachers professional knowledge is conceptualized as pedagogical content knowledge right, by Lee Schumann so long ago okay that's the part that teachers are really good in to the problem is not to develop one one to have a good teacher in one area just one area of like science teaching to have strong PCK is is already quite challenging. It takes about seven years for teachers to mature to become a really strong subject teacher. If that teacher uh, is is uh, really conscious about what he or she is doing, engaging in reflective practice after after graduation, uh, and and you know continuously learn about how to teach well, then you will develop very strong PCK. And to develop this interdisciplinary STEM knowledge, uh, that would be kind of like a really, really difficult. Okay, we cannot, I don't think we can reasonably hope that uh, a teacher can be good in, you know, uh, science, mathematics, technology, engineering, everything. That's, that's really like too much. But it is possible to develop to some extent in an interdisciplinary uh, kind of uh, environment. So. We need a, a framework that actually map out most of the knowledge and the knowledge that we need uh, for STEM is technological, science, mathematics, engineering, that's obvious, but pedagogical, pedagogical knowledge on how to, how to teach all these things uh, in an integrated manner, that needs a lot of development. There's also a need for this design thinking competencies among teachers. So cognitively, uh, teachers can no longer function like, you know, you go to teacher, teacher education college you you get a set of knowledge then you go and develop uh, you go and deliver the knowledge uh, i don't think teacher can function this way anymore because the world is moving too fast 
So teachers need to be the people who can design, right? who can look at problems and then uh, think about ways to resolve the problem. Like engineers, teachers need to be kind of like engineers, but we, we don't design things, we design lessons. Okay? So design thinking has to be a stronger and stronger competency that teachers need to have. Okay, if you want to design something, well, sometimes it's really difficult to just, you know, uh, write about it, think about it. You need to have some some epistemic artifact. What what is that? That's basically just a place uh, where you where you start to build build things up. So what we are going to do is call STEM Quest. Like it's just a Google site, okay? But it's dedicated to STEM subject. You need to have this type of environment for you to articulate your thinking and then type it down, form form into different types of activities, and then check. Well, between each page, huh? whether we are making sense, whether the sequencing is okay, and are we forgetting anything? So what I'm trying to say is you need a physical representation so as a means to mediate your understanding or development of the STEM. You cannot just you know keep it in your head. We can't keep many things in our head. If you want to think about anything that is deep and elaborated, huh? you have to have some physical representation and I'm recommending Google site as a physical representation of the development of our thoughts about some STEM curriculum. So you need physical existence of your thought. Okay. And we also need to draw on this uh, distributed expertise. We need to form teams that are, you know, science teacher, math teacher, technology teacher, the basic three types of teachers that are needed in school hall. And we distribute the, the roles so that we have a social dis, socially distributed expertise and then we can draw on. So that's basically the key pack STEM, STEM framework. A little bit about this, uh, this uh, key pack. Uh, okay. So you have content knowledge, teacher must know content knowledge, teacher must know pedagogical knowledge. Today, teacher must know technological knowledge. That means you at least need to know how to use the whole set of Microsoft okay, plus the internet. But you need more than that now. Today we need more than that. And the technological, pedagogical content knowledge also have this pedagogical content knowledge which we are familiar. Here is something that we are not so familiar but important for STEM, the technological content knowledge. Things like the micro bits, AI, or SPSS, or Excel, they fall here. Okay, they fall here. The technological content knowledge. Technological content knowledge are knowledge that are represented in, you know, basically in computers. Okay, for example, today, you, if you are a radiologist uh, in the uh, university or in the hospital, you don't look at the, you know, film anymore. Usually you look at video image, uh, not video image, computerized image. And that's how the disease is being represented. It's represented on a screen, on a computer screen. So. That's the technological content knowledge. And more and more knowledge are, are actually moving into this area. That means more and more knowledge in this world has a technological form rather than a print based on. It's more and more going into this technological form. And therefore, it becomes very important for students to master this part of the knowledge. If you're talking about engineering design, or one tools that you need to know how to use today is like. You know, 3D printing, that's one, one tool that they, the students really need to know in order to become an a engineer. And computer-assisted design, that's kind of like all engineers must know. It's part of the content already. So this is what we call technological content knowledge. Uh, this part here, technological pedagogical knowledge, huh, is like when I'm using discussion forum, okay, how do I use it properly, pedagogically properly? that kind of knowledge is a technological, pedagogical knowledge. So you just look at this TPEG, huh? for a teacher, to, a science teacher, let's say a science teacher, to develop really good TPEG, okay? knowing how to use technology in a way that science can be teached in a pedagogically very man, uh, pro appropriate manner. That already takes a lot of time to develop. Okay? Then, now you are going into STEM. Okay, so we look at here, initially we need this three type and then we develop this three type here, TPK, PCK, and then we combine all the knowledge, huh? then we form a TPCK. 
Now in the STEM, okay, integrated STEM, we actually need the technological pedagogical science knowledge, technological pedagogical mathematics knowledge, technological pedagogical engineering knowledge. Then we can form a integrated STEM. So creating a good STEM learning package of involves quite complex, very complex knowledge. If you analyze it this way, there are many, many components of knowledge that is needed. Okay. But it is not like hopeless lah, because just think about driving. You know, when you start learning driving on all the paths in front of you and then uh, then the traffic conditions in front of you, then after that, uh, how each part work and how your leg, your muscles should coordinate. But at the end of the day, when you slowly master the, the knowledge, uh, then it becomes kind of like an instinct. You don't know how you drove home, you drove home and it's safe. So you can't articulate the process. That means the more we practice in designing this type of uh, STEM lessons, integrating it and then after that uh, delivering it, think about it, refine the lessons again, the more you do this, okay, the more the expertise become automated. And then finally, we can do these STEM lessons like, you know, just like you can drive. That's how expertise actually develop through time. Uh, but it needs a lot of practice. Lah. So complex, but not something that we cannot master. So the next part uh, is about how do you actually begin to, to design? When we talk about when we talk about having this STEM, uh, STEM lessons, uh, you still need to go back to the basic about how to how to design a good lessons. Good lessons must have good appropriate instructional goals. It must be like here. The subject, you need to consider the subject matter. You need to consider whether you want to use technology or not. Okay, you need to analyze the learners and context. Analyzing the learners basically, to me, uh, the most important questions for analyzing the learner is what are the learners' difficulty in learning this topic? All teachers, when you when you design lessons, or this must be something that comes to your mind immediately. If I want to teach this, what will be the student's problem? That's, that that will map map up the gap about immediately and then you can arrange your your instructional objective and decide roughly what steps you need to use in this uh, uh, process so you need to plan the instructional and learning activities you need to choose appropriate technologies and then you need to develop the assessment okay so this all this part here you make decision and after that, you have a kind of like a lesson package. That's what we are we are doing today. After you finish designing the, the lesson package, oh, actually to be to have a good lesson package oh, before you actually teach, oh, you need to ask this question: oh, Does the pedagogical design make sense after the complete draft is out? Okay, how does it qualify as contributing to kind of meaningful learning, which we will talk about it later? And are the various you know activities logically connected? As teacher, if you have, if you have taught before, you know that if you forget to prepare something, and the students don't know that something, then the whole lessons will will you know falls apart. And like a lot of time when we talk, uh, talk about ICT integrated lessons, we thought that the students are able to use some ICT software without problem, but when you get to the classroom, okay, they don't know how to use it. You are supposed to teach a, a subject content. In the end, you end up teaching the technological knowledge. So that's how things can, can you know, go haywire. So we need to think about, after you come up with the first draft, of, you actually need to carefully think about, does the whole plan make sense? Have we missed out anything? Okay, and then can, you can also think about, is there, when we implement this, are there challenges that we have not, we have not think about? Then your lessons become a, a first round. After the first complete draft, you refine it one more time. Then you go and implement. When you implement, uh, a lot of things that you did not think about or we did not think about will surface during the implementation. That's where we cap capture what was not so good about the design. Then after that, uh, we have this reflection in action and reflection on action. After that, you will have to revise the whole lessons. I think a good STEM lessons uh, will actually require two to three rounds of implementation before it's, it's kind of like a perfect and you master all the skills that you need to, to do this thing. 
Okay, so this is about the design knowledge that is needed. Now I will touch a little bit about this uh, STEM. No? The most of the government when they talk about you know implementing STEM, the one of the reason is to prepare people for engineering job, and that's the big uh, big demand in the in the world. Okay, but then from the Ministry of Education side, no? they also hope that by implementing the STEM lessons, or we can engender kind of like a 21st century learning. Oh, what is this 21st century learning? Based on uh, this Jonathan's work uh, called Meaningful Learning, he articulated at least five, five ingredients that is needed. So now we go into these five ingredients that is needed for 21st century learning. And these uh, five ingredients, he call it Meaningful Learning, and these uh, five ingredients are actually the first one is authentic learning. So, what is authentic learning? It means that when you are designing a lesson, you need to go real world. Okay, real world. What are the properties of a real world problem? Real world problems usually are ill defined. That means you do not have one solution, you have multiple solutions. Like building a bridge, you want the bridge to be arc or just straight, make of a brick, or you want it to be made of a still there's many many choice and there's no one right answer no one knows exactly what is the best answer that's what we call you define open-ended and it demands a lot of information that's the real world problem and the other important thing about you know real world problem is like you you also need to make it authentic to your subject matter you are teaching a subject matter you cannot be you know thinking about uh, like going to mass okay there's a lot of things about going to mass but it's not relevant to your syllabus and your it's way beyond your students and your students may not be interested in it so authenticity the concept of authenticity you know, has to be threefold one it must be real world second it must be of interest to the students it need to be authentic to the students it cannot be just authentic to the teacher okay the teacher want to do it the students don't want to do it then you have the problem there so you must it must be real world it must be authentic to the students that means students must be interested and it must also be authentic to the subject matter it cannot be you know something that the subject matter doesn't really care about then i don't think the teacher will be willing to devote the time to to do this thing so authentic lessons just that alone no, is not easy uh, teachers need to choose authentic problem to to be able to do this properly huh? and if you are talking about a stem lessons huh, then the complication come in because what is authentic to the maths teacher may not be authentic to the science teacher or the technology teacher and that's where we need to do a lot of negotiation until we find a good match of problems huh, that is beneficial for the students you can't really start okay so whatever it is you still need to struggle through this finding the authentic problem okay authentic problem why propose this because of authentic problem actually helps students to learn to acquire the information to participate as a group because it doesn't have one answer it usually requires more than one head to solve the problem and it requires creativity so it promotes a lot of learning motivation, retention, transfer, 21 CC of critical and critical uh, creative thinking. It ad address the irrelevance. If you don't have something that is authentic, or students, students feel that you know, it's not interesting to learn, then you lost them on set. So if you have authentic problem, then this problem of irrelevance is taken care of. Oversimplification, decontextualization, and generations of inner knowledge, inner knowledge huh, is also taken care of. So how, how do you do that? Huh? You, you need to create context. Huh? You need to find problem, create context. And once you find a problem and create context, you need to break down the whole problem. Huh? How can someone successfully negotiate this problem? So in terms of ICT, you need to present the problem. You need to use good ICT tools. That's where the TCK come in. Okay. Example, you use CAD for engineering, Excel for modeling. Okay, so this is about authentic problem. When you design later on, you need to think, first thing, where is your authentic problem? Uh, the second part about this meaningful learning is learning by doing, active, hands-on. 
So this one, I, I will not uh, dwell a lot about it. It is just good to have students to be doing and thinking at the same time. And the doing uh, currently, because of all the ICT tools plus the uh, 3D printing, uh, CNC cutter and all those, uh, it becomes very, uh, very possible if the school has the resources. If the school do doesn't have the resources, we can think of a traditional workshop. Uh, okay? Okay. The next part is actually collaborative learning. learning. Collaborative learning talks about interactive and participative. It talks a lot about negotiation. Students teaching each other. Okay, it will start from the teacher. Lah, huh? It has the potential of facilitating acquisition, demand participation, and creation. All these things that we talk about oh, has this three. Okay, it, the learning that it requires oh, is it learns the knowledge that's acquisition. It learns the knowledge by participating in the social social discussion. And then it requires the, the learner to think about new ways to deal with the deal with the knowledge. So collaboration is uh, very important. And it's well researched. Uh, collaborative learning helps the learner a lot. That's quite well researched. It addresses problems like individualistic and competitive kind of uh, atmosphere. Okay. Constructive means minds on. Uh, you need to think. And if, uh, in order to think, uh, actually, you need to have something to think. You need to activate knowledge. If you have prior knowledge, you need to activate the prior knowledge. If you have experience, uh, you need to activate the experience so that the experience can, can talk to whatever you are doing. And from there, you actually construct a deeper understanding about whatever you are learning. So as active sense making is required. Uh, okay. And if you have an authentic problem, this is kind of like a given because students will want to solve the problem and then they, they will start to think about the whole thing. The last part is self-directed learning. Self-directed learning is important in this uh, context because if you are doing a real STEM project, huh, there are many things that we will miss out. And the, when the students look at the problem, huh, a lot of Times when they think about the solution or it's not what we thought and we can't teach them all of it so the students will have to you know own the problem and then after that they have to initiate their own study about how they want to solve the problem so that's intentional learning they have to plan and manage their own learning and you always have a time frame for them right by two weeks time they need to complete certain things so the students have to learn how to learn and then they have to you know practice very strong management about their learning their time and their coordination between different people so that in the end of within the time limit they can come up with something that is meaningful and all this the all this all has to go back to the authentic problem again so collaborative learning self-directed learning constructive learning and uh, hands-on learning active learning huh, they all start from a good problem if you have a good problem all this will happen. If you don't have a good problem, nothing will actually happen. So when you can't see that the students are doing the, the self-directed learning and all those, huh, that means you may have a problem with your authenticity. So this part here, we talk about the pedagogy. Uh, why, why am I back here? Okay, I have duplicated the sites without knowing. So, mm -hmm. We have talked about this whole framework. Whole framework. We have talked about the the all the TPCK plus the plus the TPSK, TPMK, TPEK. This is a small little research that I have I have done, and I found that actually when I survey teacher, teacher do feel that the science teacher feel that if they have strong TPSK, they are more confident in doing integrative uh, STEM. But similarly with the uh, the maths teacher and the and the technology usually the engineering teachers all of them feel that they need to have strong technological pedagogical knowledge uh, to in order to do this this uh, integrative stem just that the maths teacher uh, is the one that usually are uh, quite lost because i think traditionally uh, maths are very isolated they seldom do this integrative stem uh, knowledge so Maybe math teacher need to need to 
need to be involved if you are in a team and you are leading a team of teachers to do this stem and there you need to you need to help the maths teacher a bit okay how they can participate uh, we have also done some of this uh, this finding here uh, we found out that for teachers to be to be confident in doing stem uh, actually the most important thing is not uh, professional development the most important thing is experience that means you have to develop your STEM capacity by getting your hands dirty. Okay, you need to just go in and do it and learn from uh, the mistakes and learn from other teachers and you know slowly build up your 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 experience in this area. Then you become okay. You you have confidence to do this properly. Okay, so that's about it, lah. Huh? So I suggest that STEM Quest, huh, the, the Google site, make a good uh, mediating collaborative artifacts because Google site, huh, once I put all of you inside, all of you can be an owner of the site and then you can just change things. And it's easy to easy to change. Lah, huh? And doing a Google site actually is more like a constructionist. You are doing and you are thinking what you're doing. Ah. Okay. I need to. Where am I now? Huh? I can't see all of you. Give me, give me some time. I want to return back. Oh, uh, have you done with the presentation or what? Yes, I have done with the oh. part, the first part, the introduction and the and the theoretical framework. Oh, okay. Wait, huh? Okay. So. I will still, I will still, uh, still, still give some more instruction. Are you still on this page, uh, stand quest? Yes. Okay. Now I, I display it first. Ah, uh. uh, once I display, I got two screens, and then I, I got this. <laughs> okay. So before I, I send you into uh, uh, the stand quest, oh, I will go into one of it. And then explain page by page what am I doing and what you need to do. Okay? Okay? Okay. What is appearing on your screen? Is it the website? Yes, we can see no. the, the PowerPoint is gone, right? Now you are you are looking at the website, right? Right. No, it is the PowerPoint no, still. Oh. So you need to stop share first. Me or your site? You need to stop share first and then open the new share of the website. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not controlling. Okay, okay, wait, 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 ah. New share. Here, share. Okay. Is it now? Are you in the website? It, yes. No, it is still it's, on it's the still. PowerPoint presentation. Yes, good, good. That one. Hmm. Yes. So who is controlling? <laughs> it is yourself. <laughs> No, that's why I tell you I want to host the thing. Yes, you are the host. The no. co-host. Is it? Oh, I'm given yes. co-host? Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can do it. Okay, so are uh, all of you looking at the, the web page? Yes. Okay. Yes, Gamelan. Thank you, thank you. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. <laughs> okay. So I chose a team. Uh, I do not know whether Indonesian students uh, will like this or not. Usually we have a, a, a STEM quest. Uh, it has multiple pages. The first page is usually this. Okay, this is the home page. And for the home page, uh, the most important thing is to have good, visual, and engaging questions. Uh, in this home page. So if you have good visual, once they come into this site, they look at it. Uh, they are interested. Then we have. We have some initial hook. Uh. So 
to design this page, the visual is very important. If not, you put a video also can. Now, the second page of the website oh, is usually... Uh, okay. The second page of the website, I usually put this, uh, what is the topic? What, uh, who are, who are this, uh, who are the intended audience of this topic? So we say secondary to, and here we say students characteristic. This students characteristics are oh, basically, I, if you are constructing the site, you need to think about the students that you are teaching. Because whenever we design any lessons, if you are not, not clear about your students' characteristics, you are not designing for the end user, okay? And when that happens, oh, usually the end user will not respond well. So you need to think about the students' characteristics, which is what we said in the design stage, oh, the learner, the learner uh, characteristics. You need to analyze the learner characteristics. A few things that are important, okay, whether they are motivated, curious, okay, are they above average uh, achievement? The ICT skills, you need to think about their ICT skills because you are doing this step and whether they can handle some of the technology themselves, okay? In addition, you also need to think about their subject-based learning. Where are the gaps in their subject-based learning? If you are, if we are doing this, uh, we are doing this musical instrument. Uh, they must know something about in terms of science. They must know something about frequency, uh, wavelength, and all this. If they have totally no such knowledge, uh, then how do one bridge the gap? Okay. So think about these students' characteristics later when you are in your group. Uh, you need to modify this. Roughly the instructional time, how many periods are you willing to devote for this thing? And lesson objective, oh, actually the students need to, you need to break it down. For a STEM lessons, I think the best is to have, this one is a STEM already. Huh? You need to have science, what do you want them to achieve? Mathematics, what do you want them to achieve? Okay, technology, okay, engineering and music. If you are doing a piece of art and things like that, oh, that part you have to kind of, highlight so this page of this page actually informs the teachers and students what the lesson are designed for who should do the lessons and the instructional objectives the instructional objectives are actually guide the students in terms of self-directed learning if you write good instructional objective you orientate the students towards learning something if you can also train your students oh, when they finish a lesson oh, they need to come back and look at the lesson objective and ask themselves, have you they achieved this? So if you write it carefully, the students should be able to use the lesson objective to gauge whether they have done the learning that are needed for this. Okay or not? This page, no, no question? Challenge. Okay. Uh? Okay. 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 The, cha the challenge. Okay, the third page will be the challenge. Okay, mm -hmm. the challenge usually you say at the end of this uh sand quest, what you want the students to produce. Usually, because it's it's quite product driven uh, when you are talking about uh STEM. Uh, at the end, they need to create something, and that something that they create must embed the knowledge that you want them to learn. So I I, I write something like this: uh, a three minutes multi-motor production of one to two minutes performance of a musical piece. Must be two self-made instru uh, instruments and the making needs to be a company with explanation of science, mathematics and engineering knowledge involved in the making process. Okay, the, this part is important of science, mathematics and engineering knowledge. What knowledge you want them to, to be able to understand now? You need to specify it that in their presentation they must explain those things. If not, oh, they create something for you, okay, that looks it works, but they actually don't understand the science and mathematics behind. Before this STEM thing, oh, there's a lot of project-based learning. I have seen project-based learning that students create a volcano and then you know when you press the lava come out and all this are oh, very spectacular but you ask the students what is happening oh, geographically right here oh, the students cannot explain they are doing without thinking so that's what we call hands-on without minds on uh, that's very dangerous so whenever you specify this challenge oh, you must take care of the 
physical thing that we want to see and the cognitive thing what do you want to what do you want to know in terms of their understanding so i try to i try to you know inspire students by doing this lah. the lessons one or stem quest then i give i usually go and choose a youtube video or to, to let them see this one is 72 homemade instrument in seven minutes so it's pretty interesting but the point here oh, this 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 youtube oh, is also a way to show them oh, what they need to complete at the end of the day so this one is not too good in terms of my my challenge above oh, but in terms of inspiring their idea or oh, this one i think can do okay so this is design oh, there's no right or wrong answer and after the challenge or after you present the challenge usually i also present the the evaluation rubrics because we are all goal directed animals okay? so we we need to know okay what at the end of the day we will be assessed on and then we can zoom in our our knowledge towards that so based on this i, I actually think that the science quiz we will do a science quiz okay we will clarify oh. some graphical representations multimodal appeal and then cost and effectiveness, uh, cost efficiency and appeal of the, the instruments, and then quality of the music. So all five parts are assessed. But this is really a very brief, a very brief evaluation brief. Each one of these you can break it down further. The other lessons that I share with you, uh, the one on the on the plant growing plants, that one has more detailed uh, evaluation rubrics, and. With regards to this evaluation rubrics, so sometimes it's easier for you to go online to search. If you want a, let's say, musical performance, okay, you can search for rubrics for musical performance and see whether there are any existing uh, rubrics. Then you adapt from there. It's much easier than you create from scratch. It take, takes time, sir. okay? So this part here, oh, evaluation rubrics is also kind of like a guiding their self-directed learning oh. we need, because they need to know how they are uh, evaluated and they will plan their, their time accordingly. The rules and roles, oh, rules and roles here, okay, we are basically talking about rules, how the students should collaborate with each other. So this, this page here is targeted at the collaborative learning. Each page has a, a something that we are targeted on. The challenge we are targeting on authentic learning. The evaluation rubric is targeted on the self-directed learning. The rules and roles oh, is actually targeted on the collaborative learning. You know, that's why you need to hear, you need to tell the students oh, the, the grouping and task, meaning the how many you know in one group okay and how they should work with each other this is the basic requirement for this part here okay. now this thing is blocking me now the next part here for each of this page the science team what they need to do the mathematics teams what they need to do for each of this page oh, they are on the constructive learning and the uh, active learning. So you need to look at the topics that they need to handle given the challenge. Break it down and give them some resources or you have to tell them what they need to achieve at the end of this. Uh, okay? This one, I don't think I have enough time to go in. The last part of, the last part of the, the STEM quest is this reflection question and this again it will go back to the collaborative learning and uh, self-directed learning okay why are we asking this type of question in your personal blog write a reflection about what you have discovered about yourself in terms of collaborating with others are you a good member okay why and why not this collaborative learning or sometimes you want to you, we say we want to build students up as collaborators and very important for their future a kind of skills that they must have in this 21st century world but it's the the real ability of collaborations cannot be taught you collaborate with someone you think about how you collaborate is it good is it not good 
why good, why not good, then adjust, regulate yourself. Okay, so this self-regulated learning and collaborative learning they occurs hand in hand. You know, how do you think you can develop uh, interdisciplinary skills? That's more like asking them to think about after this whole experience. Are you a good learner? You no, know, which part are you lacking? So this reflection, or reflection, is is to me is very very important because those skills, those those competency that matters, of they 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 don't they don't they can't be enhanced by explicit teaching. I tell you, do this. It's no use. It must go by. I do it. I think about whether I'm doing it right or not. Then they will learn the skills. Then they will change. Okay, so. That's the basic part about this uh, whole website, what we have in this website. Now, we, I will stop share here and then I'll go back to the PowerPoint. But before I do that, any questions about any of the pages? You are not sure, you know, roughly if you create a Google site for STEM project. You need uh, to ask. Uh, we have a question from from the participant, Ketok Suprihatin, you can see on the chat Zoom. I can't see the chat link. Yes. Hi, Professor Chai. Based on your experience in implementing the uh, technological pedagogical content knowledge, what challenge that you find when it was implemented for the first time? For the first time, uh, the challenge is, for the first time, the challenge is actually everything. Eh? Because, because you you just for the first time, however you you do it, huh? However you think carefully about it, huh? You will find that it's not easy. Because we as teacher, when we want to implement this thing, huh, We easily get cognitive overload. Huh? So my advice would be to have this type of website being built up. When you cannot handle all the problems or the questions that the students ask, at least the students can fall back to the website huh, to do whatever they think they need to do. So they are guided in some sense. It's a bit like the in the past we give worksheet. Now we give more like websites and interacting uh, interactive place. Okay. 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 Boleh. Next. Next. Sir. Okay. <laughs> So, are there any more questions? Uh, maybe Mrs. Yuli want to ask some question to Prof. Chai. He didn't want me to ask question. <laughs> I, I didn't say so, I didn't say so, okay? okay. <laughs> so, uh, I think the most challenging, Prof. Chai, is about the interdisciplinary. Since in Indonesia, we learn about, I mean, the chemistry separately and then physics, biology, even some teachers from like language will be asking, uh, can STEM be conducted uh, in their classroom? So I think I would like to ask question that kind about interdisciplinary during the curricula that's in separate subject. And then the other subject outside the STEM how we can uh, conduct uh, the STEM outside the like language and so on. Thank you. The language part, oh, if you have a kind of like a STEM project, after that you require the students oh, to, to do a presentation. Then the, the students have to be quite good in introducing the project that they have done, the, the quality of the making that they have achieved, they, you can give them tasks like, you know, they try to sell the project, to sell the ideas or to sell the, the, the stuff that they have created. Like if you are created, like this one, now, if you have created a musical instrument and if the performance turned out to be quite good, let's talk about, you know, uh, selling it. How do you want to make a, a video that will sell this? How do you appeal to people? How do you, how do you, uh, highlight the, the good thing and you may even have to talk about how to maintain the instruments and things like that. So those are, language is definitely part of this whole process. But if you think about the process even more broadly, you can, you can think about 
you require them to talk to each other in a certain manner. You require them to write a report. That's all language. Yeah. But you cannot. The STEM project cannot replace the language education. Because language education, some part of the language education has to be taken care of by the language teacher, not the STEM teacher. But the, uh, the STEM project can give the, the context for the language teacher to train some part of the language skills in a more authentic manner. Have I answered your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, overall, I know this STEM thing huh, is difficult. I, like I start, I say on uh, one subject, difficult already. Now you have, have four subjects together and yes. all of us have different timetable, right? So how, and the school, if the school principal are not aware of this, uh, he also didn't cater for the time. So how can we progress? Actually, the way forward is just to try. Try and then work the problem out one by one. Without trying out, uh, you will not progress at all, that's for sure. By trying, we will find the best way and then to adjust the school curriculum and things like that. Slowly, we, we, will, we will, you know, build our capacity for it. It's, it's, not, going to, it's not going to be, you know, uh, one, one term, three months later, you can do it. I think you better have a time frame of about three to five years. Okay. Right. Uh, what an eligible presentation. Uh, I think STEM integration with TPAs, AK is a challenging idea by combining STEM with an um, ed educational. Uh, uh, now we have a question from Hendra Yulisman. Let me read it. Uh, based on his research, junior high school teachers still have weakness in PCK. They rarely use technology such as computer and only use smartphone. Can the use of a smartphone be an indicator that the teachers TPACK is good? I, I can't hear you very clearly. So just repeat the most important part of the question. Can, okay. the, can the what? Smartphone be what? Uh, can the use can the use of smartphone be an indicator that the teacher's TPA CK is good? The, the smartphone is definitely an important device oh, that has to be incorporated in today's STEM. Because I, I discovered that there are many apps oh, on the smartphone. If you know how to search the apps, today is when you today's when, when you are doing the the STEM oh, when you look at the, the problem, oh, you can you can go to the app store and find whether there are apps that talk to this. I found that there are engineering or no? engineering mathematics apps on the, on the smartphone. So the smartphone is definitely need to be considered as a valuable resource. At the minimum of no? the process, you need to the smartphone to, to, to take picture, take video, just taking picture and taking video no? is very good for, you know, when you are testing the product, whether the, the thing can fly, how far, use the uh, video recording. Now no one carry a video recorder, right? They all carry handphone. So at least handphone has to be used for that. Okay, I think I will, I will stop this, this uh, questioning. Later, if we have time, we will still do it. Okay, I, I will stop the, the, the sharing for this part here. I want to get you into a... Are you okay to get into breakout rooms? Before we break out into the rooms, huh, I want to I want to uh, give you a few instructions. Then I will I will try to go into your breakout rooms huh, and look at what you are doing. We are we are doing workshop, right? Workshop means you have to do something, right? Yes. yes. Huh? Okay. So stop share this part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Then I'll share back the PowerPoint. Are you looking at the PowerPoint now? Heads, heads on activity. Hands on activity. Okay. The, the next one, huh? breakout room. Later, the, the host will break you up randomly. Huh? 
I think we have about 40 people, right? So we have uh, maybe five per, we break out to eight rooms later, okay? Now, once you go into the breakout room, huh? actually I have shared with you all the, the website. You decide who is hosting the site, okay? Duplicate the site with a unique name. That means I want you to use my site, then you duplicate my site into a new site that's your site. And add all the members and me huh, in as editor so that everyone can edit the site. Once you have done that, huh, everyone will go to the, the site and open the site and then you will have to work on the various parts of the, of the lessons. Okay, so let me show you. Huh. If you go into the site, you will look something like this. Okay, you need to go into the edit mode of the site, which I have already shared with all of you. You are editor. Okay, you just open sites.google.com. Huh? If you are in your Google, if you are in your Google account, you will see this thing. Okay, then you go inside there. Whoever act as the host, huh? you have to click on this one here. Okay. Right. No, no, sorry. Step one is here. You look at this, this thing here. Okay, click it and say duplicate site and then give it a, a name. Like making instrument, okay, making instrument, uh, team, don't know, don't know what, okay, then you just say duplicate. Then after a while, huh, the site will become your site. You are no longer in my site, no? you are in your own site. Then the second step is you need to click this. When you are in your own site, you need to click this and you add the Gmail of the people who are in your, in your group. By clicking this, this one will appear. Then you type the Gmail account and you say, uh, then done. Then everyone can go into that site already. Okay, this instruction, any, any question? Clear. Clear, clear. Boleh? Boleh, boleh. Boleh, then uh, maju. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> sure. Okay, okay. So I, I leave it to you, the host, break the, the room, okay? Wait a second. My my team still working on it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. How many breakout rooms? Okay. Professor Chai, are you still with us? Pak Chai, di sini kan? Iya. Nah, Chai itu mana itu Tadi udah keluar Eh ini kok saya masuk ke listmu sih? kasih tahu dong itu. Uh -uh. Ini saya masuk ke room lain. Habis itu break off, room break off. Uh -uh. Ini room utama. 
Oh, Muntama. ini tuh Muntama udah. Udah 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 Muntama. Tapi tapi nggak dikasih. Cai nya belum masuk. Bilang Bu Yuli aja kali ya. Bagaimana? Prof Cai itu nggak ada. Nggak ada. Saya belum kasih tahu emang. Ayo kita masuk ke itu. Oh. Oh. tes Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terdengar? Oke. Okay. Profesor Chai Halo, Profesor Chai, are you still with us? Oke, okay, I'm with you. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Sure. Oke, okay, uh, we can start the break room now. Oke, okay. oke, okay. oke. Okay. Do it again. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now uh, the host is inviting me to join the breakout room, breakout room six. Uh, please join. Okay, I'm in breakout room two. Okay.
Enter. Eh? Internet, what is this? Stop. Uh, I don't know. Very difficult. Okay. Are you in? Okay. Okay. Let me let me do it now. Let me do it. I I show you. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Okay, now you can see right. Oh, I can see. I can see a lot of people in in the site. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me share. Let me duplicate the site. Okay, duplicate the site. You can see right. All the people who are inside. Ah, uh, Ida is there. Okay. I call Ida many times, but Ida don't want to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ida. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. now I create a duplicate site. I will use Ida and Faji. Ida and Fi Fa Zri Ida Fazi just like that. Then I say duplicate. So it's now copying a, a site, a new site. Okay. How so? Now I need to go and check my my am I in the new site or in the old site? You, if you go to your Gmail, or you you go to your Gmail. Yes. You will find that it informs you that you have a new site waiting. Yeah, let me let me try. You need access. This is. Um, Um, yeah, okay. I go into my the, my Gmail, they, it says that your new site is uh, making music instrument, Ida and feature now. Okay, let me let me stop share and share again. Screen two, okay, screen two, yeah, screen two. Share. Okay, can you see the new sign? Yes, I see. Yeah. Now, if I go in there, mm. my, I need to type Ida. Ida, what's your, your, uh, your Gmail? Yeah, Gmail. Ida, what is your Gmail? It's Soleha 047. Maybe you can type it. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Where, where she is typing? typing in uh, type chat. in uh, Zoom chat. This is Alfajri and in, in the chat room. Chat room. Chat room Zoom. Prof. No, I have the uh, I have Fajr one. Yes, on uh, Ida. Okay. Wait, wait. Uh, I put Fajr one in first. Ida, Ida Soleha. Okay, and well, this is not easy eh, to do it in Zoom. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, lah, it's fun, lah. Yes. Okay. So you see the two, oh, Then I say send. Can you see what I did? 
now if you go to your G, if you go to your Gmail, you you'll find that I invited you. You can come into this site. Now, if we want to change anything, okay, oh. this one here, I have a few tasks for you to try, huh? Okay, let's let's say for this one, the background you don't like, you want to change the image, you just come here. Can you see? Yes. Image, yeah. You just click this change image. Ui. Then it will ask you. Okay, I have some problem here. Change image. Okay, you can select image. You can upload image. If you have your own image and you keep it somewhere, okay, you can you can put it there. If not, I usually just go select image. You see, are you are you seeing the the new thing that I'm, I'm seeing? Yes, I see. Yeah, you see ah. Uh, so I say I can go by URL or I can search. I can search. What what do I want to search? I said in do nature tradi traditional music okay then i say search on huh? it, it has all this right okay I, I want to change the image i just click this one and i say select no the image is changed can you see yes i see yeah. That's how you change image. If I want to change text, I just double click here. I want to change the text. Okay, I want to change the header type. The header, I can. Now I'm in the cover mode. That means it covers the whole page. If I change to a larger banner, it will be something like this. Then below, I can have. I can change to a banner, it's even smaller. But if I change to a title only, the image is gone. Can you see all this? yes i see yeah yeah so that's how you edit a page that's how you change a page okay the more interesting thing is here uh, let's say this page here i want to have a you uh have a url i want to i want to put the uh, indonesian music real music so i double click here can you see all this i can yes, say i see embed embed means you want to embed a youtube you can embed something whatever that uh, you can em embed uh, some like apps if the apps is okay you can just just put the apps you copy the thing in then when you say save all the whole thing will be there mm, okay? okay we try and embed a, 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 a youtube bar, huh? but we haven't find a youtube okay it will ask you for something now i will just uh i will just go and search a, a youtube bar. any youtube bar. Oh goodness me, where am I? YouTube. Oi, YouTube, come on. You cannot see I I'm I'm searching something, I'm searching Indonesian music. Indonesia song. Okay. Wow, so many, uh, I don't know how to choose. Okay, I just choose anyone. Uh yeah it's called okay. oh. i'm back here and back code right right i just put youtube uh, then i say next really? where it goes okay one more time I say insert. Can you see the music there? Yes, I see. And the students can can if you publish it on, then the students can see. That's the new the new website. Publish. I just published, okay. Ida, are you okay? The whole whole thing? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay eh? so you know how to link this time? Can I, I can open? Open. You know how to make a new site yourself? Ida and Fati, do you know how to make a new site yourself? Yes. Yes. Yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So you the, the two of you can discuss what you want to want to do in this site and then I can I can go to the other site and see what they are doing. Okay? Okay. 
you Thank can you, try sir. to change whatever you want to change in this side and then give more instruction and things like that. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I try, I try other other group.
Oke, okay. oh, you back here. Uh, I think so. Okay, okay. Now, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, yes, I see. I see. Can I make my musical instrument? Yes, okay. So, just now the task for all of you is actually to come here, okay, in the edit mode. Actually, how to get there is just to type site. Com. Can you see my cursor here? Okay, just to type sites.com.google.com. Huh? If since I have shared it with you, once you type this, you go into the site. Yeah, uh, this 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 URL here or this site here is already shared with you. So you should be able to just click and open up the site. And what I ask you to do is actually to click here, publish. Okay. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yes, that's not what I asked ask you to do. I need to go back. Actually, what I asked you to do is this, this to click here and duplicate the site. Can you see that? So that I hope that each breakout room can duplicate the site and then duplicate the site and make it your group site. So everybody has your own site. And after that, I ask you to add all the all the members in the group but uh, i'm not sure whether all of you are able to do it it's, it looks like some of you are able to do it those those two rooms that i went in but uh, not all so that's basically what i ask you to do here this three dot duplicate the site why do we duplicate the site so that you can create your own site and here once you are once you duplicated the site who you want to work with you need to add them down here now i have a lot because i i add almost all of you those who give me the G, gmail i add all of you but if all of you work on this site then it becomes pretty uh, confusing and actually the other things that i want to want to just show you all is how to work on each page if you if you want to work on any page you just click this page okay change image okay i want to change the image i just come here change the image and then you can select image or you can you can do uh, uploading of image so up to you you want to change the header here i can change the header to a banner a smaller one okay the the thing here is anywhere in the page you want to do something you just double click this thing will appear image is here you want to upload this somewhere you want to upload something okay some something like if you have a if you have an exercise sheet or a worksheet that you have created in google drive you can just click here google drive and then it will go into my drive mm. then you can you can do anything inside your drive or you want to put uh these are some of the things that I have done inside my drive maybe i want to just anyhow click okay this won't do because this is a specialized uh, web okay let me let me just just go back down here anything okay i want to embed something url any url or you want to embed another website that you want them to look at huh? you can just type the url there and then the, the the people will be able to, to go in i just show you all embed how to embed a uh, youtube huh? we can just find any youtube
just now I, I show this lah. Indonesian song, the first one that comes up. Siti Badria. What song is it? I don't know. Okay, I, I have to share the screen again. All right. Anna, I I was a bit worried just now, so I I got lost. I don't think I have a, a screen now. I have to open up my my wait wait wait. I open up my Google site again. Mm. Okay. We were here just now, right? We said we want to embed the YouTube. Double click any space, just open, and then you can just put the YouTube there. Mm -hmm. and it. Okay, this is this is important and good, huh? especially if you are doing some coding. Like you want the, the students to code a micro bit. That specific function you go and search in YouTube, you can just put that. How to code that thing inside here. You just insert the, the, the YouTube. If you want them to do some 3D printing and then there's an instruction that is already online YouTube, you just find that YouTube, double click and then click inside. Anything I want to write here, okay, here I want to write something. I just double click, okay, I want to write. So it's text. Just click the text and then start typing. Newest song. I, I don't know this song. Okay, then it becomes like this. Okay, here I, I look at it, mm, not nice. I want to change the background. What do I do? I just come here, select background. Can you see? Can you see or not? Yes. I okay, the... I just click here, uh -huh. image. I can select image. I can, I can just uh, select image. You can go by, you can just go by a URL. That means you know where the image is. Okay, you know where the image is. You just copy the image URL. And you will come in here when you use this by url you are not infringing any copyright because the image is actually not in this site it's from the other side but if you want to search they have certain limit okay i want to search some let's say singer okay put this one anyone ah? see the background change immediately, but it's really not nice. So change again, select image or by default, the gallery, they give you this. Some of it is quite nice, uh, you just choose anyone. Okay, the background is like that. So every page, you can just, you can just play around with it. And it doesn't, it's just like a, a Word document, but it's a more multimodal kind of things. So you can insert, you can insert song, you can insert sound clip, you can insert video, you can insert, you can even insert some apps, okay? I think you can insert some apps just by, if you want to embed the apps, you want the students to go to a, say, a virtual lab laboratory, a virtual lab where they can work on some, some of these things. You click the embed, give the URL, the, the, the website will appear here. And when it appears here, you can give instruction to students what to do. When they finish, where do you want them to upload? So every page you can do that. I have created the basic structure for a, 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 a STEM quest. Okay, basically the home and all those pages. You can change any of this. Since I have shared with you, I give you the whole, I give you the whole thing off because like that you have a structure. So anything you want to change, now you have this on. Don't change my site. Huh? Duplicate into your site first. Give it a new name and then you have the structure. So what you want to write inside there, you want to write in Indonesia, that's fine. 
once you finish everything, what you need to do all is to publish it. Mm. Then give your students the published website. You don't share with your students all as editor. They are just viewing and then they, they are just doing. Okay, but if you have a group of teachers that you want to work on this thing, then what do you do? You share with yeah. them here as editor. Here, here, here as editor. Okay. Then you can go into the site and work together with you. Your science teacher can work on the science, the math teacher can work on the math. And if you want them to say, you want them to use the uh, Excel file, okay, to do some modeling, uh, make some graph, you can embed, use the Google site, use the Google Google spreadsheet, and then you can embed inside. The students can type in all the all the variables and then they can they can do all kinds of things. Okay. Now. So the whole idea about how to make a STEM quest, is it, uh, is it clear? Do you need uh, me to elaborate anything? Now we can ask questions. Wait, I'll stop share, okay. okay. So, any question? Uh, Question from Sri Wahyu Cahya Ningsi: uh, Are we just change the layout, the layout or the content as well? The layout. What do you mean by layout? Uh, uh maybe maybe she's mean uh the background. Okay, let me show you this. The, the site appearance, appearance. The site appearance. Oh, can you see this part here? You can have picture. These are the pre pre done one. You can have picture, then text left and right. You just choose any of these. All right. Okay. If you want to learn more about Google site, where to go? Do you know where to go? YouTube. Oh, YouTube. You just go YouTube. Mm -hmm. How to build Google site? There is a ton of tutorial. They even teach you how to make a GIF huh, in the in the web page. That means your your web page is is like something like waterfall. The water keep coming down. Okay, you can put the fish. The fish keep swimming around. Okay, so you can find all kind of things to embed. But you want to learn more about the Google site? Just go to YouTube. YouTube has lots of tutorial to teach you. Okay, if you say okay, I want to embed an apps into the Google site. They also teach you. They even teach you uh, how to change my Google site into a into a handphone apps. You can also do that. There's just a few uh, simple steps. Then you you just follow the step. Then you you convert the whole thing into a handphone apps and then put it in the app store. Your students can actually download a series of lessons using that apps. Okay. So it is possible to do all this, but I. I also don't have time to do all this. But if you are interested as a group, oh, you can really go in and, and do all this. For today, oh, for today actually, if you if you can do all this, like say, within the page editing, oh, like change the background, change the background of the main text, change the text size, insert web pages and YouTube, insert Google Doc, slides, forms, and the students can uh, that students can duplicate okay insert a page delete the page preview a page okay do you know how to do that if you uh, know how to do this basically you are okay with google site uh prof prof chai yeah uh titan sulistia asked that uh, she can able to edit the site uh what's the solution what she can what she cannot able to edit the site. She was unable to edit the site. She 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 cannot able to edit the site. That means either oh, I didn't add her as oh. the editor or oh. but do you know how to create a site from fresh? Let me show you how to create a site from fresh. Huh? You don't need me, okay? Let, let me just just get uh, where am I? 
Okay, I'm I'm confused with the two side again. We are we are going to finish soon. It's not the it's not the best lah because we are doing it via Zoom. Huh? But uh, you know this thing is recorded. You can you can ask for the record. Yes. Uh, okay. my table will share the link for the five video recording. Okay. Hmm. Now, uh, I'm also like very confused. How do I share my screen? Okay, I'm I'm sharing my screen. I stop share. Yes. Okay. Let me try to show you. I share my screen now. Huh? Uh, a new okay. okay you can see i'm on uh, just a google site right okay right right okay blank page i just type site dot google see mm. site top. okay now if i go in because i'm already signed into my my these are all the sites that i have created can you see Many, many, my students created many sites. Just, we just oh, changed the thing. Okay. If I want a new site, just start a new site, a blank site, just start. So, untitled, your title page. My title page. Indonesian workshop, okay? A new page. Okay, I want to add page. Well, yeah, let me move this. Here, pages. Okay, I have one page. There's a plus sign here, right? Plus one more page. What's the page called? Second page. Uh, maybe a uh, Titan Sulistia uh, means that uh, the site that you have uh, sent to the uh, zoom chat cannot be ca cannot be able to edit uh, because just because you uh, you didn't share the the email right mm -hmm. i must not always do this and mm -hmm. yeah okay okay i must add you as editor then you can but if you create your own site like just what i show huh? you are the owner Owner oh. and editor is not the same. Owner has more right. Okay, so we have just just done one. Okay. 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 We just here themes. Okay, you want to have simple themes, Aristotle's theme. If you don't know what it is, just play with it. Just play with it and see what's the outcome. And you know, it's just like any word document. You just add pages. You but it's it's more like you can embed a lot of things inside there. So you just play with it. And the pedagogical idea has been explained to you. Now it's almost, I think it's almost time's up, right? I will just go back and show you a bit. Stop share. I will just talk through the, the rest of the, the PowerPoint slide. Actually, the what we have done here, you can see the PowerPoint slide. Okay, what we have done here, we have done in in actually uh, a few years ago in in UNJ, and we we asked them to make a this PowerPoint uh, make a site. This is the old site. Okay, I just want to show you the result. We started with something like this, and then at the end of the whole workshop, we found out that the the teachers. Because they are in the group, they have science teacher, they have a building teacher, you know, vocational teacher, building, green building, and all those, and uh, environmentalists, and all those inside a team. So after they they finish the whole whole workshop, they I did a pre post test of the survey. You can see that all of them increased their knowledge in how to do science with technology, how to do science with math, how to do engineering with math, uh, with with uh, technology all improve their confidence and how to do that all improve that's that's two years ago i was hoping today uh, if you finish this uh, you really do a site really go and work with the team do a site since you already have the site okay you finish you complete uh, you should improve 
in how to make use of different types of technology to teach the subject matter and how to make this subject matter contribute to an overall STEM project. It is possible to do it, but you really need to do it. Then you will gain the, the skills in doing it. If you are really going to do it, uh, then, then I can open up more sessions. Uh, in the I'm in summer holiday. Uh, you can just give me a, a, a you know, give me an email saying time you want me to go into your group Zoom and I can look at your site and give you some consultation. Uh. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 That's all for my sharing today. All of you have the slide, have the have the Google site. Uh, good luck. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, Professor Chai Jingxi.